in the previous video we have seen how to create and manipulate arrays and matrices and how to store values on them in this video we are going to practice a little bit more and learn new comments from the last exercise we still had the, the variable x in our workspace we can check that with the ls comment and a new comment that we're going to learn now is the rm comment which removes a variable from our works workspace and now if we use the ls comment again we have an empty vector as our our variables so i recommend that all of you use this comment on the beginning of every program that you create because what it does is removes all the variables from the your current workspace this ensures that your software doesn't need your program doesn't need any variable that it is on the workspace it ensures that you have a clean workspace the example that we will see now it's an uh, example that frequently comes up here where I work in the agriculture and biological engineering which is uh, sim computer simulations and we have to deal with data from many sensors and let's say we have uh, a sensor that provides us with um, hourly data and we want to create a table structure for that hour hourly data with uh, day and hour so the first thing that we need to think is like how would be the first column of this table would be the day and the day needed to be repeated like let's say we have a month of data so it's 30 30 days of data and so we have to repeat for instance the day one 24 times because we have 24 hours in the first day and 24 hours in each day so we are going to use for that purpose the command wrap the command wrap repeats a number a uh, given number of times so let's see let's say I want to re repeat the number three five times so that's how it works but not only that we can pass a range of values here for instance 1 to 20 so I want a uh, array from 1 to 20 values to be repeated five times so the second argument the second parameter of this function is how many times we want to repeat but so let's try Re repeat numbers from 1 to 30 24 times this doesn't seem to have given the what we really needed it repeated numbers from 1 to 30 24 times but we need each number of this of this group of values to be repeated 24 times each of them so let's take a look in the help from the comment uh, wrap and a new comment that we are learning now is the question mark the question mark uh, calls the help of the R program about the comment that you're asking so I can ask for help for the comment wrap okay replicates elements of a vectors and lists we have uh, a group of arguments it's, it's not given how many arguments they need but the first one you can see here is the ve it's a vector uh, it doesn't need to be a vector could be a single value but it's a in our case it will be a vector and there is further arguments that should be passed that can be passed and one of them is the each each the each argument it needs to be a non-negative integer and it repeats each element of x each number of times okay that's not important the rest of it but we see that there is a way to do that with the rep comment so let's try again rep 
uh, one to five each three times. Now we got what we needed. And the reason why I call the argument each with a name here and make it equal to a value is because sometimes the arguments need to be called by their names, especially when they are like for instance with uh, additional arguments that you can be passed. When you don't assign a name, they will be read in the same order. But when, in this case of the rep comment, you have many other possible parameters, and so you must assign a name to it, or if it, it doesn't work if you don't put a name. Look, and we are going to learn when this is needed when we take a look in functions. Now the comment that we should give it's repeat one to thirty each twenty-four times. Here I assign it to a variable called day. So day now contains the day of our table. N now let's think about hour. Hour in this table should indeed be repeated from 1 to 24, to 24 30 times. It, it doesn't need to be repeated each element. So we can just go straight and assign a, a rep command from 1 to 25. Rep from 1 to 24. Uh, doesn't matter if I put the command C or not here because when I assign an interval like that is already an, an array uh, 30 times and I'm going to assign that to the variable hour so now hour contains our, the hour of our table see here the last element is 1 to 24 so now let's learn another comment. It's called cbind. cbind is stands for column bind and it will merge two uh, vectors in the way that they look like a table uh, as columns. So I created a vector called day and I created a vector called hour and so I will bind them together in a table form. However, we we, we sh shown this result that we didn't store it anywhere, so I need to make it equal to table. So I'm creating my table. Table is just the name of the variable, could be anything. Let's put tbl here, just to not confuse. So now tbl contains the day and the hour that we created. Now let's say our sensor measures the water in a bucket or something like that and this water it goes from 1 to 50 increasing by intervals of 0 0.5. Now how do we do? We can't repeat or make a sequence of the... we, ca we can't... Now what do we do? We can't repeat this number so we need a new comment and it's called seek s e u e q this comment creates a sequence so if i ask for a sequence from I it's the same as interval right this will create a sequence also however this allows me to provide additional arguments to it the first argument is from it's the start of the sequence, the end of the sequence, and there is an argument called by, which will say by how much is the interval. Let's say 0 0.5 is the one that I want to create. Okay, so now we have this data. Now let's bind that to our already existing table. So our table is called t TBL which we will need to, s to bind with itself and here the order, order matters because I'm going to bind the table already existing with a new vector which will 
I can pass a name here also so I will call it water it's equal to the sequence that we created before 1 to 50 by 0 0.5 and so here I'm binding the table that already exists with this new sequence and storing it in, in, the, sa in the table itself here it gave me a warning and it says that the size of the table is smaller than the size of this of the sequence that I created of course it's smaller and so it it will do what it's called recycling the vector will start automatically again and will ha have repeating values in the third column so let's take a look how it looks like tbl head tbl you can see here day hour and water let's take a look in more values add 50 see here day remaining the same constant the hour varying and the water increasing how we expected right so now I propose an exercise to help you to memorize this the exercise is the following create a matrix with three columns the first column should have numbers from 1 to 49.9 with the interval of 0 0.1 needs to be 49.9 because if you put 50 it will create one number more it will be one number bigger than the other values here and the second column should have numbers from 1 to 50 each number repeated 10 times the third one should contain the sum of these both numbers per line and you show just the end of the matrix so your result should be something like that and just a tip on how to sum the values of the the uh, a table per line let's take a look in our table we can like we saw in the last lecture we can select just one column of this table and we can always sum that table with another column of the of a table so that's that's an easy way to execute this command I realize that this is a lot to learn, a lot of commands, it's hard to memorize them, but keep your reference sheet with you. There is no other way to learn a programming language that is not like by practicing, by trying the commands, by changing stuff and seeing how it goes, if, if the parameters and the arguments behave the way you think they do, how to solve this exercise step by step. In the next one we are going to see a little bit about types of variables and then we are going to develop a routine that will retrieve real weather data and so it should get really really exciting because you can use real data in your analysis then and the rest of the course we are going to use uh, real weather data so it should get very exciting see you next video